Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we will look at what are the various arithmetic operators. So the agenda for today's video is we will look at all the operators in Java and we will understand in detail the multiplicative operators and the additive operators in Java. So without wasting time, let's get started. So here we have all the operators in Java. And the table shows the operators with the decreasing precedence from top of the table to the bottom, right? And the ones which we will discuss today is the multiplicative and the additive arithmetic operators. Now let us understand what are arithmetic operators. So arithmetic operators are used to construct mathematical expressions like the ones which we have in algebra, right? And the operands are usually of the numeric type, like the integer type, the floating point type, and we also have the character type, right? And as you can see below, we have this simple expression where 5, 6, and 7 are your operands, and plus and the multiplication are your operators, right? So now let us look at the multiplicative and the additive arithmetic operators. So for the multiplicative operators, we have the asterisk, the division, and the modulo. And for the additive operators, we have the plus and the minus sign. And we need to remember that your multiplicative operators have a higher precedence over the additive operators. And unless it is overridden by the parentheses. The next thing what we need to remember is the multiplicative and the additive operators are binary operators. That is, they require two operands. And your operands are evaluated before any arithmetic operator is and final thing what we need to remember is the multiplicate and the additive operators can operate directly on the values and on your variables. So now let us see this rules in action. So now let us look at the very first arithmetic operator which is your addition operator, right? So suppose if you want to print sum of two numbers, we use the addition operator. So let me print this. So we have system dot out dot print LN. And inside that, I want to print this sum of two integers. So write 1 plus 2. And I save this and I run this. So I've saved the file. Now let me run the file. So on my terminal, I'll compile this program. So I'll type java c test.java. And as you can see, we don't have any compilation errors. So let me run this program. Arithmetic operators. And as you can see, we have successfully displayed the sum of 1 and 2, which is equal to 3. All right. Now let us look at the addition of two floating point numbers. So I write system.out.println. I'll write 1.0 plus 2.0. So end with a semicolon. So let me save this and run this. I'll compile it. Okay. We don't have any compilation errors, so let me run this. And as you can see, we have displayed 3.0. So we have also added our floating point numbers, right? Now let us look at how what happens if we add two characters, right? Because internally, each of the character is represented as an integer, all right? So now let us look at the addition of characters. Now let us suppose if we add two characters. So we have system dot out dot print ln and we add the characters uppercase A to lowercase D. So let me save this and run this. Now we have successfully compiled it. Now let us run this. So as you can see, we have the output of 165 all right this is because internally each character is assigned a unique number under the unicode right so a unicode is nothing but a computer encoding scheme all right so now let us look at how to convert this integer into a character once again so if you want to convert the integer back to the character what we do is simply add parenthesis outside the expression so we add the parenthesis outside the expression a plus d right and i have added the parenthesis and before the expression i need to add the character inside the parenthesis as well so i have the 
parenthesis and inside the parenthesis I write the char data type all right and so if i compile this i should have the character output so let me save this all right so if we compile and run this we should have the character as a output so i have successfully compiled now let us run this and as you can see we have the output as a n symbol so basically under the unicode uh, scheme we have the integer value of n as 165 so the output is n right and the process used to convert the integer to character is casting and we will discuss that in the future videos all right so till now we have been only applying arithmetic operators to the values like 1 plus 2 1.0 plus 2.0 and so all right so apart from this we can also use arithmetic operators with the variable so we have a variable i and we store the value of 2 in it we have the another variable j and we store the value of 3 inside it so now let me print the sum of those variables so i'll type system dot out dot print ln and what i do is add i plus j all right so now let me save this and run this so i've saved the file now let me run this so i've compiled the file now let us execute it and as you can see we have the output as 5 which is some of the variables i and j and last thing what we need to know about the addition sign is that it can be also used as a string concatenation operator all right so don't worry about this string right now we'll see this with the help of an example so i type system dot out dot print ln sorry it's print ln and instead of just typing in i plus j what we do is write some so we write sum is and then we add the outputs as i plus j all right so this is your string sum is your string and what we do is we concatenate right or append the value right so this is your string concatenation right you have a string and then you're appending some another string or your other data types all right so let us see this right so I have the sum is and what I do is I try to add i plus j and you know we'll see the output right. So let me save this and run this. So let me compile this and execute it. And as you can see we have the output the sum is 23 and this is not the one which we were expecting right. So let us see why this happened. So this happened because in Java, if there is a string and to the right of your string, if we have the addition operator, right? So to the right of the string, we have this addition operators, right? And all the operands are just concatenated to the string as a simple text, right? So we have this, you know, i and the value of i is 2 and this is just concatenated with after this, the sum is 2. And then again, we have the concatenation operators. So it, what it does is just appends 3 after and that's the reason no arithmetic addition is performed on the numerical operands like we have this i plus j right and even if the operator is plus in between them and so to get the proper output what we need to do is add your i plus j in between parentheses so i'll add parentheses and now let me save this and run this now let me compile this and run And as you can see, we have the proper output. The sum is 5. All right. Now let us look at the difference operator. So difference operator is used to find the difference of two number types. Right. So let us see this. So we have this 1.5 minus 1.3. And let us save this and run this. Now let us compile this and run this. So we have compiled the program. Now let us run this. And as you can see, we have the output as 0 0.19. And since the point is not accurate, that's the reason we use big number class in Java instead of float and double. All right. And one thing what we need to know about the subtraction operation is that if I using subtraction operator with the string in the statement, then we need to put the expression in the parenthesis. So what I mean to say is system dot out dot print ln. And then we have the string difference is difference of 3 minus 2 is plus 3 minus 2. 
and I need to enclose this expression 3 minus 2 within the parentheses. Otherwise, I'll get the compilation error. So, if I save this and run this, I shouldn't get any compilation error, and the output should be dropped. Now, let us compile and run this. So we have compiled the program. Now, let us run this. And as you can see, we have the proper output. The difference of 3 minus 2 is 1. All right. And one thing what we need to know about the arithmetic operators plus and minus is that they can also act as a unary operator. So what do we mean by unary operator? Unary operator means that they can work with this single operand. So I'll give you an example. So we have system dot out dot println. And here I'll use the negative sign to negate the number i. Alright, so let me save this and run this. Now let us compile and run this. So compile the program. Now let me run this. And as you can see, we have the negative minus 2 as the output. And we can also do something like this. So we have system dot out dot println. If I do negative sign, then our space, then negative sign and the i. Alright. So if I run this, I should get the positive 2 as the output. And notice the space between the two negative sign all right and let me compile this right so if i compile this and run this the output should be positive too and here you can see we have the output as positive too now let us look at the very first multiplicative operator which is your multiplication operator so i'll write something like this system dot out dot print and then one what i'll do is i'll put a statement as three times Two is and then add three times two. All right, I'll save this and run this. And you must notice that I have not put any parentheses around the expression three times two. This is because the multiplication, division, and the modulo operator have higher precedence than your addition and the subtraction. So the operation three and two will be performed first. And then your concatenation with this string will be performed later on. All right. So let me run this and validate this statement. So if I compile this and run this, I should add the output as 6. And you can see we have the output 3 times 2 is 6. All right. Now let us look at the division operator. So what we will do is divide an integer by another integer. All right. So what we do is system dot out dot print and we put 11 divided by 3 and so what the expression does is it evaluates the quotient right as an integer value so your 3, 11 divided by 3 will output 3 because 3 is your quotient so we will see this and prove the validity so i've compiled the program now let me run this and as you can see, we have the output as 3. Now let us see what happens if we divide a floating point number. So we have system dot out dot print ln. And what we do is 11.0 divided by 3.0. Alright. So let me save this and run this. Now let me compile this and run this. So I've compiled the program. Now let me run this. And as you can see, the output of division of floating point number is also a floating point number. Now let us look at the last multiplicative operator, which is your modulo operator. And modulo operator is used to find the remainder for an mathematical expression. So we will see this now. So we have this 11 modulo 3. So this will give the remainder. So let me save this and run this. Now let us compile the program and see the output. So I have compiled the program. Now let me run this. And as you can see, we have the output as 2, which is the remainder for your expression 11 modulo 3. All right. Now let us look at few more calculations for the modulo operator. So we have system dot out dot print ln. And now instead of the integer type, we use the floating point type. So I write 11.0 modulo 3.0 and let me save this and run this. Now let me compile and run this. So I've compiled the program. 
no let me run and as you can see we have the output as 2.0 now let us look at the other special cases for the modular operator so suppose if i copy this statement and I paste here three times all right so here we have the numerator and the denominator as your positive sign so instead of this numerator being positive we make it negative and the denominator being positive here your numerator is positive and the denominator is again negative and in the last one we make the numerator and the denominator as negative so now let me save this and run this now let us compile and see the output And as you can see, for the statements which we added right now, the output is negative 2, positive 2 and the negative 2 once again. So you must notice that wherever the numerator is negative, the output is in negative. And if the numerator is positive, the output is positive. And we will look at the detail why it happens in the next part of the video. So for the integer remainder operation where only integer operands are involved, the calculation of a modulo b satisfies the relation as a equals to the whole term of a divided by b which is multiplied to b and you add this to the whole term of a modulo b and you can see with the help of the example if you solve this the minus 7 modulo minus 5 we have the remainder as minus 2 and you can verify that with the help of the and similarly for the floating point remainder operation the calculation of your remainder is you know somewhat like a minus the whole term of b multiplied by q and there the r is your remainder and q is the integer quotient of a divided by b so what do you mean by integer quotient so integer quotient simply means that you just put the integer part and not the decimal part like if we have this you know minus 7.0 divided by minus 5.0 and below you can see that i have just written the one because i have skipped the decimal part and that is nothing but your integer quotient and if you solve this equation you get the remainder as minus two for the floating point type all right so that is it from the today's video and please don't forget to subscribe my channel so that you don't miss any notification for the videos like this. And I will see you until next time.